introduce my colleagues. My name is Zita Maharaj. I am from the Career um, and Transitions Advising Team at McGill University School of Continuing Studies. And in the screen to the right of me is my colleague, Emily. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and afterwards, I see my colleague, Nayo, if you'd want to say hi. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi. Nice to be here. Perfect. We are just going to start our session with um, a very customary uh, land acknowledgement. I'm going to ask, please, that everybody puts themselves on mute for just a moment, and we will be with you. Zita, remind me, should I be clean? Oh, God. Please. introduce today's moderator. Um, Emily Salvi is a phenomenal colleague to have. And I'm just going to stop. Sorry if there was noise, excuse me. Uh, I just want to introduce Emily accordingly. Emily Salvi is a career advisor. She's um, a learning strategist, a strategist, excuse me. She's a connector, she's a creator. And she um, definitely likes to engage various tools for strategic learning and learning solutions. She is um, a wonderful colleague. She's also ex extremely big on um, all events, humanitarian, sustainable. Um, she's great with um, connecting folks for volunteer opportunities and making sure that we have a grand understanding of how our communities work together and alongside one another. Um, welcome everybody. And I wanna pass it over to my colleague, Emily. Thank you so much, Sita. I did not expect that. <laughs> Wow, okay, thank you, Nayotu. Okay, you are all amazing humans. Everyone here, can we say everyone here is amazing? <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, so I am so excited to be here today with all of you. Hi, everyone, welcome. Uh, I'm so excited for this session today. It's my pleasure to introduce you to today's keynote speaker, Joyce Fuerza. She is a producer, a filmmaker, a television host, film festival program director. Uh, in cities all over Canada. And for those of you who don't know Joyce, I'll just share a little bit about her. Um, over the course of her work in the industry for more than 10 years, she's been able to connect with so many creatives in the business and also has helped develop such a great knowledge on the realities and challenges related to what a lot of them have to face uh, in terms of having their work seen, showcased, recognized, um, and especially looking at filmmakers coming from diversity. So she also has her own production company where her goal is to continue creating content that not only entertains, but also empowers, educates, inspires, while, while always providing the tools and resources that creatives um, can, can take to, to succeed. Uh, in their in the work that they're doing. So she finds lots of pride in contributing to giving a great voice and platform to showcase filmmakers work. Uh, I'll, I won't go on because we're gonna learn a lot about Joyce's uh, career and trajectory and the amazing work that she does. Uh, I just wanna start off by congratulating Joyce on the recent short film that she's directed and produced and has been the winner of the uh, 2021 Honorable Mention Recognition at the Nassau Film Festival. Joyce, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Emily, and thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored to be here and to, sh to share my journey and my story. And you guys, if you have any questions, do not hesitate at all. Um, so I'll start by telling a little bit about my journey. Um, I was originally 
I was born in Haiti. So I left Haiti when I was a teenager and I did my high school in the U.S. Then I went on to study uh, in business administration in, the, in Latin America. And then after that, I came to Canada where I went to um, Concordia University to study in commerce at the John Wilson School of Business. Um, so I've traveled around a bit. Um, and I guess that's also how I know um, so many languages. A lot of times people are asking me, oh, Joyce, you know, you speak five languages. How, how did that happen? So <laughs> it was through my travels. Um, and I have to say that, you know, when you're going from country to country, there's a lot of challenges that comes with that, but also a lot of opportunities. I've always been the one to see the positive side of things, you know, like whatever it is, I encourage everybody to do so as well you always have to see the positive side. Um, through that, I was able to learn about other cultures. Um, I became more open-minded of an open-minded person. I, I feel like I could relate more with people because I've traveled so much and you know, like studied, um, learned about new um, realities happening from different uh, parts of the world. So today I am the director of programming for uh, six film festivals across Canada, can, uh, Black Canadian film festivals. And like, as Emily mentioned, I also have my own production company, um, Joyce Quetzal Productions. And what we do is we create um, content that not only entertain, as Emily says, but also that could create an impact that also empowers and inspires other people. And that was really the number one reason why that this company started because um, through my involvement in the industry, I got to meet so many creatives and got so inspired also by their work and by their drive, you know, like to make it in the industry. It's a very tough industry, the film industry, especially for people from diversity um, to get, you know, like their voices heard, to get a platform to, to showcase their work, to get, um, to get seen, especially in front of the camera. And I know a lot of work has been done and there's still a lot of work to be done. So I'm very happy to be able to contribute um, to that by you know, contributing to offering a, a platform to showcase people's work and have their voices heard. So I'm very proud um, about that. And speaking about creating your own opportunities, I'm gonna go back to when I first started my production company and my first production was actually um, a motivational talk show because at that time I wanted to offer a platform where I could invite um, people who have succeeded from different industries to share their success stories. And that's when I said, you know what? Um, I really wanna start a talk show. And at that time I had no grants. I had no big major network associated with it. I really started from resources that I had at hand that was not much because I was really first starting out. So I didn't have any big team or anything like that, but I know that I had a purpose and I know what my goal and my mission was. So I started with what I had at the time. And um, we did two seasons of that show. Um, the first one was in Montreal and the second one was in New York, interviewing, um, having uh, chats with people who were successful in their particular industries so they could share their journeys, just like I'm doing right now, right? Um, so later on, little did I know, I was gonna meet with a television producer who was looking for a host to host a TV program at the time. And I, I was able to show what I had done before. So it goes back to creating your own opportunities, right? So if I had not started at that time with that talk show, with what I had at the time, I would have never been able to say, oh, you know, yes, I have hosted and produced a show before. So I am definitely the person you're looking for. Um, and I sent to him, you know, like different seasons of, of the episodes of the show that I've done. And the next thing you know, he said, can you come in Monday morning to the studio? And then that's where my career as a television host started. Um, so I always encourage people because sometimes you get really stuck in saying, you know what, I don't have this, I don't have that. You're waiting for the perfect moment to do things and that perfect moment will never happen. You have to really start with the resources that you have. You have to start connecting with people. I always enforce um, the idea of getting good with networking, ne like acquiring networking skills because 
people that you meet, that's also part of your opportunities, right? You never know um, what you might need. And the person says, oh, I can recommend that person. So I always encourage people to really network with people in your industry, collaborate also. I'm very big on collaboration. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I guess uh, I, 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 went, I covered a little bit about my journey and what I've done. And um, recently I've also directed my first time directing um, a short film about um, child abuse and women trauma. And uh, it was also produced by my production company and it just won an honorable mention in New York as Emily stated. And I'm, I'm very, very proud of my, my whole cast and crew. And um, so it's continuing to do um, film festivals right now and we'll see what happens next. And um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, Joyce. Uh, you have some great comments in the chat. Uh, people saying we have a comment from Carolyn. Sounds like you'll be the next Oprah with your own twist and style. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the saying by getting a go by uh, being a go-getter gets you noticed know, for sure. Um, you've definitely uh, accomplished you know, so much and it seems like you've known what you've wanted even if um, uh, as you mentioned, you only realized that production company was something you wanted to do late, kind of later on when you started seeing uh, uh, kind of the gaps in the industry. I'd like to go a little bit back and knowing it seems like you're you, a lot of what you do and pretty much everything you do, you're so purposeful. How did you know or how did you learn to discover your purpose? How did I learn? I'm sorry. Uh, how did you learn to discover your purpose? How did you know how to find out what is your purpose? Oh, that's a great question, actually, because a lot of people struggle with that. Um, they, I've had that problem, too. A lot of times you ask yourself, you know, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, like, should I be doing something else? And I think the key to that is to try different things. Like, don't be afraid to discover yourself and try different things. Um, for at a very young age, I was really involved in the arts. I did theater in high school. I did stage performances. I had taken acting classes. So arts was really a passion for me. It was always a passion for me. Um, so after I graduated high school, I decided to go into business because I love entrepreneurship. And also that got me to start my own production company, which is great. Um, but I've tried so many things. I mean, I've done acting. I was singing in church. Um, I've done screenwriting, directing, producing. And now I feel like um, my, my um, focus is really on three main things, television, hosting, directing, and producing which is that. But before that, I tried so many things, Emily. And then that way, it's like a process of elimination as well. Because when you try something, you say to yourself, this is not for me, or this is really for me. But until you do try it, you keep telling yourself, is this really for me? Like, if you don't try it, you will not know. So I would say throughout that process, it's really try new things and see what works and what doesn't work. And throughout that process, you also experience, um, you also learn from experiences. Do not be afraid to fail, guys. Seriously, failure should be your best friend. I know this doesn't really sound too good, but do not be afraid to fail because if you don't try things and then you fail at something and you learn from it, you will never grow. So keep, you know, trying. And I know this is uh, also about, you know, transitioning into new careers. If something is not working for you and you discover something new and you say, and you feel like deep within your heart, within yourself, that's what you should be doing, go for it. And through that process as well, don't hesitate to connect with people who have more knowledge than you do. Because for me, um, throughout my career, I was very fortunate to be able to connect with a lot of mentors. I had never been afraid to pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm stuck here, can I get some help? Do not be afraid to ask for help, to, to ask for advice, to ask for mentorship. And even though sometimes um, there are mentors that are not exactly accessible to you, make the internet your best friend. There are so many um, great people, you know, like, uh, give uh, through podcasts, YouTube, make your research, read books, educate yourself, you know, to know more about things that you don't know. Um, I think that way, um, 
you cannot, I mean, you cannot go wrong. So that would be my, my answer to this question, really. Wow, so many. I'm going to rewatch this session <laughs> and probably <laughs> take notes and apply this every day. Um, for those of you who don't know, Joyce and I met uh, back in university, and you were always so, you like the way you are today is how you were then, and I'm sure you were always like that. It's such a positive uh, person. You have such a fresh uh, and positive outlook. Uh, I want to know right now you're talking about how it's so important to try new things and I love that but with that comes so many insecurities and I'm just thinking about myself and so many conversations I have with people um, as, a, as a career advisor uh, we, we want to do things a certain way we want to have things well done and we feel insecure about trying new things so these negative voices do pop up in our heads. Um, do you have any negative voices? <laughs> You're such a positive person. <laughs> and if you do, what are your mantras or mindsets to help you uh, get rid of them <laughs> and accomplish what you want to do? Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah, I do have those <laughs> those voices. That's that's everybody. Like seriously, you guys. It doesn't matter if you like if you've made it. I mean, I don't think people who are successful in general ever feel like they've made it. I think they always have this next step, this next achievement, right? You never really feel like um, you're done. That's it. You know, you, you always want to explore new things, like achieve new things. And absolutely, Emily, I've had those voices. Like I've had, I've had those insecurities. I've been nervous still today. Hey, those are things that are normal. And it's like, I, I think you can also talk about fear, right? You, when it's the unknown, you're, you have fear, but don't let those things stop you. Like I said, if you feel really stuck, reach out to a colleague, reach out to somebody that, you know, you feel like there's um, a good understanding and, you know, try to get some advice, but really listen to yourself deep inside yourself deep inside your heart if that's it if it feels right to you go for it because fear um anxiety uh nervous like nerves you're always gonna feel those it doesn't really matter always always no matter where where you at in your career no matter how successful you are this is like i think a human being thing right it's totally normal don't let that stop you me i don't let that I don't let that stop me. I always, if deep inside my heart, I know, I, I, I truly believe that this is something that I should do. I go for it. So that's what I would say. Thank you. Thanks so much. And it, on the note of, okay, so in terms of actual mantras, do you have any mantras that you use to help you um, keep going? Uh, like, for, for oh, example, like what certain mean? mantras or certain rituals or certain uh, mindset to use when you're feeling when you're feeling scared or feel fearful about trying something new. Um, you know what, I think it's also important to go back to what you've accomplished before and say to yourself, you know what, I've done this, I, like celebrate yourself from of what you've done before as well. Because when you look back and you see what you've accomplished, what whether it's it's um, career wise or your personal life, you say, you know what, I went through this so I can do this too. You know what I mean? So that's what I do. I always go back to see where I come from. What have I accomplished? What have I gone through? And if I could do this today, there's nothing else that's gonna stop me from doing that. So I think it's very important. Sometimes we're so stuck into oh my goodness, like you have to do this thing now, but you never really take the time to breathe and say and see what you've done before, where you come from. And I think that's very important to do that. So one of the things that I do always is take a step back and think about that and think about, you know, if I could do that, then this today, I can do it too. So that's one of the things that I do. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, going back and remembering key moments where you've accomplished you know, whatever it is that you were going through. Um, I, I want to go back to when you mentioned the importance of finding mentorship. Uh, you said that you've, you know, always reached out, you've developed an incredible network. Um, what is your process of finding mentors? Um, and what has helped you in the past in terms of finding people that you can trust and, uh, and exchange with? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, since 
university, you know that, Emily, I, I always like to get involved in so many activities, associations, yeah. organizations, like, you know, to be very active. And that's been really one of the things that I love is to network, right? Um, and I'm fortunate enough, well, I've been working in the industry long enough to know, you know, enough people to reach out to, but that's not the reality for everybody. Somebody, some people are just starting out. And I would really encourage those people, like I said before, to network, networking, seriously. Um, you don't know where that next door is going to be. Like, who's going to open that next door for you? You know what I mean? It's never, a, a, um, you never lose anything by getting, pe getting to know people and not only getting to know people, but also getting people to know you, getting people to know what you do. You know what I mean? Because let's say, for example, I go somewhere and I meet somebody and I say, hey, you know, um, I'm a filmmaker, right? That person, that's going to be there. The next time they're doing something, they're looking for somebody, you know, for film, they're going to think, oh, you know, I met this girl, Joyce. She's in the film industry. Like, you should reach out to her. You know what I mean? It's not just about getting to know people, but also get to get people to know you exist and this is what you do, you know? So I think that's um, very helpful as well. And like I said, again, guys, books are your best friend if you don't know anything. Um, when I'm talking about mentors that are not accessible, let, let's say Oprah Winfrey, for example, you can listen to Oprah online. She has great messages. She has great um, advice. She has great mentorship. It's free, you guys. So take advantage of that. Like do the networking, of course. You need to meet people in your industry. And right now, today, in today's world, most of the things are virtual as well. So you have absolutely no excuses. You get on virtual networking sessions. You meet people from around the world, you guys. You know what I mean? Like from around the world, not just, not just in your city. And also, it's important to, to network with people um, locally as well, um, because there are some projects where uh, perhaps you might need, you know, like to work with people that are physically there too. Um, but seriously, take advantage of all that's um, available to you. And um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I see Zita's hand is up. Zita, I had a follow-up question. Do you want to go ahead? No. Nope. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm going to ask it and then, okay. On the on the topic of, you mentioned, uh, so the, it's just that importance of networking and putting yourself out I'm there. I'm sorry, on the topic of? Okay, okay. I'm going to just get closer just so you uh, hear me, hear me well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So on uh, the topic of networking and putting yourself out there, as you've mentioned, uh, and letting people know, as Lita wrote in the chat, staying top of mind. There's uh, there's so many people, and clearly in your uh, in your case too, you've had like you have many different roles. Um, how do you probably? And it's uh, you're such a great example for also so many people at the School of Continuing Studies and our community of professionals that are diverse and have such a variety of uh, are multi talented, uh, have either gone through various careers, uh, are looking to transition, have are juggling, you know, working in a company or organization and starting their own business. Um, so how do you, what are, how, how would, what's your best advice and how do you sh uh, showcase yourself and the different roles that you have uh, during networking in any kind of networking context? Oh, that's a very good question. So navigating depends, those different roles. Yes, yes, absolutely. It depends on which networking you go to. And I'm going to give you an example. If you are um, a television host, well, I'll, I'll say myself, a television host, a filmmaker, and a producer, right? And you go through a networking that's all about, you know, like television and hosting and things like that, and has nothing to do with the film industry. Well, your best bet is to introduce yourself as a television host, right? Because that's what it's about. That's what the people there um, are all about. And that's where maybe opportunities um, that will go your way will be based on. So I, I would say it depends on who you're networking with. If it's, for example, something that's more tailored to the film industry, then go ahead. Hey, I'm a filmmaker and producer. Not so much the television host part, because I'm not saying it's irrelevant, but in the setting that you are at the moment, that's not the most relevant thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I would say when you wear many hats, depending on who you're meeting, 
um, be, uh, be very aware of the type of networking events that you are going to. Make sure that you know exactly, okay, what is this, this networking about? Who are going to be the speakers and what industry are they? So that way you can better introduce yourself and see which hat fits best, right? So that's what I would say. Great. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Intentional networking, as Zita mentioned. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Zita, go for it if you wanted to. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you, Emily. I just wanted to pop in and you said some so many wonderful gems that, you know, I think people are writing notes and things, but you're reiterating the messaging of the the opportunity to be top of mind and to be seen and to, to reach out, you know, lean in and reach your hand out across the aisle all the time. I just, I, you know, I also find it interesting about mentorship. Be mindful. It's almost like it came to mind as you were saying, ask for mentors and get them everywhere. Be mindful of who you also ask to be a mentor. I've in the past made the mistake of asking a um, news director at a TV station because she was a woman and I had only ever seen men in that role. I was like, can you be my mentor? <laughs> and she said, yes, but we didn't define the role. And it was extremely disappointing and mm -hmm. heartbreaking because we didn't know what we were doing. Like we didn't have a defined exchange of what was needed. And I feel like I was let down because I wasn't mentored, but maybe she mentored me to the best capacity she had. And I'm not trying to take away from you, Joyce, but it was just like, we have to be intentional even when we're looking and seeking mentorship. Yeah, that we absolutely. Have to, like, what is this? What do you want from the person? Because I might want mentorship from from you know somebody who can put me in on track for my finances somebody who will put me on track for my fitness like there's different parts of you so therefore there'll be different parts of the mentorship process too so I'm, I'm saying that almost to like tie in with your intentional networking intentional mentorship oh yes absolutely I absolutely agree 100% that is so true very very true yep thanks so much for adding that I really thank agree you. with that yeah thank you Lisa that's yeah, absolutely. And we don't talk about defining that with that mentorship uh, relationship is like. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to write it in the chat, in the chat either openly or privately, uh, or speak up. Please uh, feel free to do so. I know that time is already <laughs> running and it's already 12. Um, I want to see if anybody has any questions. Yes, you guys, don't be shy. Ask your questions. Yes. <laughs> I do have a final question for you, Joyce. Yes. Um, so whether involved in a total, in a chosen career or looking to transition professionally, the Power Skills audience is always looking to get inspired, to inspire others and to really take action on improving themselves and getting closer to their truth, personally, professionally. What's the best advice that you've received during your career so far that you'd like to share with today's Power Skills audience? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I've received so many advice, but I would say the one that I'm still living by today is do not get stuck in your comfort zone, you guys. Like, it's so easy to just feel so comfortable doing the same thing every day. And you don't really, you're not really using your whole, your whole potential, right? So don't do that. Do not be afraid to take risks, you know, like, go after your dreams, dream big, take action, do the work don't get stuck you guys so that's what i would say um emily um yeah i love that, I <laughs> yeah. Love that. thank you so so much i think also and, and i wanted to say something also um about when you wear many hats um like myself it's also important well when you're starting out of course it was my case too right you are you don't necessarily have a whole team with you right because you're just starting but don't get stuck just doing everything by yourself forever you know because you have strengths you have weaknesses and you need to be able to identify those and work with key people that can have so you so that you can have the right balance make sure that you start with doing collaborations and little by little, and this comes to with the networking thing, you start building your team. So that way, it's like so much better because you have different points of view, you have different perspectives on things, and you have people Bless that know you. things that you don't know to help you, you know, like navigate whatever it is that you're doing. So it's very important to start building your team little by little and not get stuck in the 
doing it all by myself all the time. So I would say um, that. And also, guys, use social media, LinkedIn, connect with people, Instagram, whatever it is that works for your industry or your business. Because there are certain things that you do that not necessarily this kind of platform is going to work for it. So make sure you're able to identify what kind of social media platform works for you. Um, and people will discover you there too. I don't know how many people connected with me through social media, you know? So make sure you have, you represent yourself well on social media and, and clearly communicate what it is that, you know, that you do or um, which kind of people you're looking to work for or whatever it is, but do not underestimate the power of social media. Thank you. We have a question. If you guys are willing to stick around for just a moment, um, there's a question by KM. Did you want to ask it yourself? Go ahead. I had muted you, so you might have to unmute. There you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I, I came in at 1130, but they didn't let me in. And I just got in now. And I missed everything. Oh no! Are you, are you sending the transcript? Can you send me the transcript, or can you send me the uh, audio? We have the recording. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. We'll send the. Recording. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me after. I mean, I don't mind at all. <laughs> okay. And how do you reach? How do we reach you? Yes. Well, you can go on my website, JoyceFuerza.com. My email is there. Yeah, or okay. through LinkedIn as well. That works too. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. So I've included uh, all the ways that you can connect with Joyce. You've left us with so many amazing pieces of wisdom. You've accomplished so much, Joyce. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your and for radiating your amazing positive energy and just amazing pieces of advice. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been so great. And I will be back anytime, you guys. <laughs> then we're going to call you back. We yes. And if, you and back. if anybody has any questions, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'm on all social platforms. And you can also go to my website, my email. Uh, the email to contact me is there as well. So don't hesitate. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Joyce. This has been an amazing, such powerful session. Uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, continue connecting. There's so many great sessions left for today. Today's already the last day, but uh, please stick around and please know that for whatever you missed, everything, most of the sessions will be uploaded on our YouTube or YouTube library of videos. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Zita. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. It was a great session. Oh, man, this was awesome. Thank you all.